Hey folks, welcome to another episode of Adventures in Dog Training with American Standard Dog Training and American Overwatch Canine Services. To my left here is Chase, a two-year-old working line German Shepherd. That means an Eastern German Shepherd. Czech German Shepherd, DDR German Shepherd. All pretty much the same thing. What I'm trying to explain to you guys is, in this video, is a working line German Shepherd right for you and your family. A lot of questions asked. German Shepherd, very popular breed, very popular breed for families. This video is going to discuss is this dog right for you and your family? So, I have a ton of experience specifically with this breed, uh, working line German Shepherds. Uh, my father was a police canine handler uh, since 1980. I was born in 1983. He stayed a police handler for 30 years. So, literally, my entire childhood, my entire life growing up, I've had one of these dogs by my side. They were basically my brothers growing up. Uh, he went through five dogs as a canine handler. I got to experience all five of those working line German Shepherds. And then I became a police canine handler. And guess what kind of dog I got to work? Same kind of dog that Chase is here. Uh, Big Papa Thor was the dog I had. 105 pound East German German Shepherd. Working line German Shepherd. Looked like a dire wolf. Looked like you could pluck him right out of uh, Game of Thrones. He would have fit right in. Um, this here's Chase, and Chase is about, mm, we'll say 75, 80 pounds. He's a little lean right now as part of our training process. Uh, very healthy. He's at a working weight. Um, but at, at this working weight, he's about 75, 80 pounds. He could plump up to about 85 pounds. It's typical size for, for this breed. Uh, it's a little hot out, so you're going to see him panting. We've been out here for about 20 minutes already, which is fine. This is great. Give me an opportunity just to talk to you about Chase. Why don't you come in for some shots while we talk about him? So this is an important video for anybody that thinks they want a working line German Shepherd, right? A lot of people say, oh, I want a dog that's going to protect the house. Well, what happens is this is a serious conversation, and I hope you guys bear with me. As I, I don't think there's anybody else out there that can give you as good of advice as I'm going to give you now. I would highly recommend that if you choose to get a working line German Shepherd, right? We're not talking about the American line. Working line, Google it, find the difference, um, that you are very strong personality if you choose to get this dog. You, your wife, and you instill training. I mean, you're gonna have to do the training because if you don't, this dog will walk all over you and your family, will, will take ownership of your house, and you will have a liability on your hands. And the way I usually explain it is people say, oh, I want a dog that will protect me, and we're gonna do protection work. And if someone comes in the house, they'll bite them. You have to realize the amount of hours and the amount of money that you need to spend to get a dog to actually bite on command, to release on command, and differentiate between eating your neighbor that comes over the house to say hi and biting a bad guy that may or may not break into your house in your lifetime. What we do know is friends and family are going to come over to your house. And so the concern is you buy one of these dogs, whether it's an East German working line dog like this, or any other dominant breed that you want to protect your house, the question is, will the dog be able to protect your house if you have him locked up in a cage because he's a liability and he's going to eat everybody? So it's that fine line of like, well, I want a dog that can do protection, but then you get that dog that will eat anyone, and the problem is he wants to eat everyone. And then now you have to lock him up and keep him behind closed doors. And now he's offering no protection, right? You have that stranger at the door. You want to open the door, but you can't open the door to find out what that person wants because the dog's trying to kill him. And so now you've got to put the dog up. Now you open the door, and now you have no protection. So I always suggest to any of my clients that want a protection dog, and when I ask them why and they want the protection, I say buy a nice dog and also buy a gun. Okay, the gun is what's going to protect you, okay, because guns have safeties. Guns can be stowed on your person or in a drawer or wherever you need to keep it. This is a big liability and there, there is no safety, okay. Even the highest trained police canines have what we call accidental bites, meaning they bite the wrong person, they get out of the yard or get, go out the front door and bite the neighbor's kid and you are talking about a pretty serious lawsuit and now your dog is a menace to society and that dog that you spent all that money on and that you love so much 
and after years of owning, you're going to have to put them down or put them in a shelter or whatever it is. It's just a recipe for disaster. So I kind of went on a tangent there, but anybody that's looking to buy a working line German Shepherd usually says, I want a protection dog. Look, to be honest, folks, if you truly want to protect your family, unless you're re ready to spend forty or fifty thousand dollars and then another t you know I can't even tell you how many thousands of hours of training and I don't mean paying someone to do it I mean you doing it then your dog is not going to really be that asset when you need it ninety nine percent of dogs will not bite a bad guy that comes in the house even if they are trained alright so let me get off that topic now and let's just talk specifically about the breed and what you can expect just because you buy a working line German Shepherd doesn't mean He's just going to bite everybody, first off, so let's, let's get that out of the way. There's more potential that they could, and in this case, we'll talk specifically about Chase and his story up till now that he's two years old. What we're talking about with him is, it's a police officer owns him, not a canine handler, but he reached out to a canine handler friend of his and bought this dog. This dog is the uh, offspring of a police canine dog, right? Not that I need the backstory to know that, he's a working line dog. There's no question about it. As soon as you look at him, as soon as you deal with him. When I first came to, to check him out, after the owner called me and said that I'm his final hope of getting this dog right, because he's already been to prior uh, trainers, positive only trainers that could not handle him, um, I came over to the house and he told me like, hey, be prepared. I'm prepared for sure. Let's see, let's see how tough your dog is. I come in the house and he's trying to eat me through the, through the cage. Again, he has to be in the cage when I first come over because they're not sure if he's going to eat me when I come through the front door or not. And I'm not the bad guy. I'm just the trainer, so I don't need to be eaten. So they put him in the cage. I come over. Sure enough, i got to spend the next 30 minutes to an hour be doing it the nice way, feeding him treats and letting him know I'm not a bad guy before we could even let him out of the crate. Now, when we do let him out of the crate, I see immediately what the problem is. This dog has full run of the house. So it got to the point, now that he was, I think, just shy of two years old at the time, they went ahead and they had to get him snipped because they were running out of options. They took him to two positive trainers. First positive trainer, you know, they did good work. He was a younger dog then, so the dominance issues hadn't come out yet. Um, but they didn't get what they wanted. So then they took him to another trainer. And, and what, what I mean by they didn't get what they wanted is, if you had food in your hand, the dog would work for you. But he's a dominant breed. And if you don't have food or it's not worth it to him, and you tell him to sit or down, he's going to look at you and say, make me. He's the king of the household at that point because of his breed, because of his dominance. And so they didn't have the tools or the knowledge on how to let him know that that type of behavior is unacceptable and that he is not the alpha of the house, that they are. So what happens is they didn't step up to that role. They didn't know how to do it, and so he took over that role. And now you have a, quote, out-of-control dog. This dog had full run of the house. Food on the counter? His. Food on the ground. His. That toy? Mine. Um, if he wanted to jump on the couch, he'd jump on the couch. Did whatever he wanted. Where it was really getting bad, and I noticed it right away as soon as we took him out, the mouthing. This dog would mouth people's hands. And I don't mean like a puppy. It's his warning saying, hey, I'm the big dog. You don't touch me there. He would not let you touch him anywhere, anywhere behind his neck. Even Around his neck, it was only on his terms. If he didn't feel like it, he'd mouth you really bad and let you know, hey, I don't like that. That's a precursor to I'm going to rip your arm off if you keep doing that. So um, let's fast forward a little bit. Just the, I wish we had filmed it, but on that same first day, after about an hour and a half of being coming friends with him as best I could without um, getting off to a bad start with him, being positive only, I needed to get him in the back of the pickup truck in the cage to transport him about 15 minutes to my house. Well, he wasn't feeling it. He said, none of you are going to touch me anywhere <laughs> to get me up into the truck. We tried to use all kinds of food and treats to get him up into the truck. He, it's a pretty high lifted truck and he wasn't going to go back there. So we're running out of options. I didn't bring a ramp. I've never, let's say I've never had this issue, but He's a very dominant dog, and he was not going to let anyone lift him up and put him in the truck. And he wasn't feel like jumping, so here we are 15 minutes into it. I'm trying the positive-only method of, look, come on, you know, trying to coax him up. Long, long story short, we had to get to the point I had to muzzle him because I went for it twice to, to lift him up. Um, and sure enough, he let me know, if you do that again, I'm going to bite you. Uh, he actually snapped at me, and I was quick enough to move out of the way. And then um, it was just starting to get real ugly, a lot of conflict. So I said, look, let's just put the muzzle on them. Well, I mean, that was their suggestion. I happened to bring one. We put it on, and we put them in the truck. Um, they're familiar with the muzzle because that's the only way they can take them to the vet. They have to muzzle them, and 
they have to tranquilize them. They have to give some kind of uh, sedation pill before they even bring them there. That, that's to the point they had gotten with him, and the positive-only uh, training methods weren't working. So let's go ahead and make this a, a two-part video because I think this video is getting pretty long. We're going to end uh, this part one now, and in part two, we're going to talk more about um, our experience with Chase so that you can understand that if you were to buy a dog like this, the things you're going to have to be comfortable with and doing um, so that you can have an enjoyable life with your dog. Because if you don't do these things, this dog is going to end up at a shelter. All right, so enough of part one. We'll get into part two. We'll see you in the next video.